it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. I just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. My own experience is that it's not so, it's not so easy to meet Cape Tonians. Really? Yeah, like you meet them, but on a very superficial basis, like in a restaurant, in a club or so. But like to really like to, to, build, to build up friendships is not so easy. I don't know, it seemed like people were very much inviting and, and, and welcoming into in, in the circles. So I think that um, for me, one of my favorite things about Cape Town is, that, is actually the people, mm. you know. When, when somebody sees me for the first time, mm. one of the first questions that they ask is where, where you're from. Mm. Now, I don't have a problem with um, um, somebody calling me an immigrant because I'm not from South Africa. But when they call me a foreigner, you know, that word foreigner, it comes loaded, you know, because from what I understand, you know, a foreigner is somebody who is foreign. You know, you're not from Africa, you're foreign. But I, I am in, I am from Africa and I am in Africa and I am termed as a foreigner. I find it um, um, a little bit, it, it worries me, you know, the kind of impression that some locals have about immigrants and foreigners. Okay. It seems like there is no difference between foreigners and immigrants in Cape Town. I don't know. Have you had a like, bad experience with that? I have had really, really extreme bad experiences about that. And usually I try to avoid it because it's, it's always like I'm the only one, you know, in a group of people. And if I have to fight back or if I have to start arguing, you know, I always become the victim. You know, so I don't know with you guys, you know, whether you have come across situations like that, you know, you might not have because you look white. But it depends. You know? It depends like a certain level because it's, it's if there's a type of problem, when things kind of break down, the first thing that they're always going to say is foreigner. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's the easiest thing to point out. Like if, if you get an argument with somebody at a bar or anywhere, the first thing that they're going to point out is, all right, you're a foreigner. You don't know what's going on. So it's like the most, the, the simplest thing that's, that somebody can say is as to why you don't understand or why they don't like you, you know? So I think that happens anywhere and it's not just a South yeah, African I think, thing. I also think that, you know, being, being simple does not make it, you know, easy for the next person just to understand or, you know, just to digest it. It, it does not, it does not, I don't condone the fact that it is wrong for another South African to call me a foreigner just because it's simple for him to call me a foreigner. You know, I feel that there is, there, is, there is lack of um, information and education from every level of society, including us, the immigrants in South Africa. Because in situations like that, you know, you have opportunities, you know, to actually explain what a foreigner means and what an immigrant means. Same with the white, you know, foreigners in South Africa, because I have situations where I used to be a waiter, and when I approach this client or this patron and the next thing that they tell me or they ask me is, you're not from South Africa. How did you figure that out? Because your English is better? Because you don't, you don't go, uh, 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 uh. And what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to feel better? Am I supposed to feel good about that? No. You know, I'm supposed to, like, tell this guy that, you know, don't try to, to create a line between me and, you know, the fellow Africans in South Africa. They thought they were complimenting you. They thought they were yeah, complimenting they thought, you. They thought they were complimenting me, but not everybody compliments me in that way. You know, some people have ulterior motives, and this is what we've learned, you know, you know, years ago about psychological defeat. You know, there is, there is always a way of playing with people's psyche, you know, so that you get, so that there is always a way to separate, you know, those that are supposed to be together. And generally speaking, I think that we should try as much as possible, you know, for us sitting here, at least we're talking about it. We shouldn't wait for other people to intervene and say, you know, listen, try to understand the, the next person, you know, try to understand the backgrounds, try to understand the culture so that you can start tolerating them. No, we also should do the same thing. You know, be it white, be it black, be it Asian, you know, whatever. So it was just... Well, um, I actually have a question for you. Do, does that happen to you when... Because what happens to me is I'm in, a, I'm in a shop or anywhere and, and what happens is the locals, um, they greet me th thinking that I'm one of them. Um, and uh, I actually have to tell them that, you know, I'm sorry, uh, could you speak English? Um, 
I, I don't really understand what you're saying. And that happens to me, I can tell you every day that I go out to, to buy something at, at Woolworths or something at, you know, at the mall or anything. And the, the first question that you know, I get is, you know, after, after I say, no, please, uh, can you speak English? Because I don't understand what it is that you're saying. <laughs> and uh, you know, they ask me, where are you from? And I say, I'm, I'm from Mozambique. And, wow, your English is so good. And no, but no, I tell them that, okay, I, I'm from Mozambique, but I, I, I grew up you know, in, in the UK. I had uh, uh, my primary school all the way up to a bit of high school. I grew up there. They're like, oh, okay, because you know, you speak so good English different than, than, the, the, than what we're used to hearing, you know? Then I'm, I would hear like, but I'm, what, what are you used to hearing from, from who? You know, from, from the locals, from the lo But then I'm, I'm like, no, but I have friends that are even South Africans that speak very well good English, even better than me, you know? Ah, but you know, sir, we don't really, you know, it, I haven't met anyone that really speaks as good as English than what I'm hearing from you. You know, you, I do find that sometimes. I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see any importance, you know, placing emphasis on whether you can speak good English or not. And I don't really see how I can't really, you know, be dwelling on the subject of speaking good English or not. Because first of all, English is not my first language. English is not the locals, you know, first language. So. For somebody to compliment me and tell me that I speak good English, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference to me. You know, it's not it's not like it's not like something I should be proud about. You know, I speak English, I speak English because I want to express myself, you know. So if I'm gonna identify myself as a person because I speak good English, you know, it doesn't make sense, you know, to me. So what what I'm saying is that obviously, you know, there is a level of of society where people understand and they tolerate people no matter your background, you know. And then you have that level of society where people have this rigid mentality or understanding of where people come from. Your own, you know, environment probably tolerates you, you know, better than my own environment. And and I can only speak from my own personal experiences, you know, what 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 occur and what happens, you know, when I am in in the midst of these people and this is the way I deal with it, you know. It's, it's, it's either I identify somebody that can, I can speak to, you know, that will listen to me, or I walk away, you know. And, and in your own situation, I cannot tell you how to deal with it, but um, May last year, you know, lots of brothers were affected, you know, and even though some of us, or some, some of those immigrants that lived, you know, that live in the affluent areas were not affected, we were all somehow psychologically affected. and. It, not because you live in such an area that I have to sit back and just watch, you know, the other people, you know, go through such an ordeal. I have to do something, not because the people around me tolerate me, but because I understand that there is somebody down there who is also an immigrant like me, and and they are struggling to make these people understand that. Listen, you know, we need to interact so that you get to understand me better, so that I'm not treated the way I am treated right now, and. For somebody in my position, you know, I, I have to do something. You know, I'm not just going to sit and say, well, I'm not affected, you know, because the people around me tolerate me and um, life goes on. You see what I mean? You know, it's, it's, it's weird because, um, I mean, I, I never, I never, never had to go through, through most of the stuff that your foreigners or immigrants have to go through. Because, I mean, okay, I came here post-apartheid, when was that? That was 94. And, um, yeah, I started in primary school. And I was fortunate enough as well to go to a, a co-ed school that, that um, would promote, that was anti-apartheid during the apartheid regime. So, so the, they, they promoted interracial, interracial schools. And, in matter of fact, they actually had an underground school at the beginning because it wasn't allowed. It would be illegal to have um, white kids and black kids studying together. So okay, I was, you know, I was fortunate in, in in that aspect. Like, I never really had to go through through because kids don't see color. I think. They, I don't know, man. No, I don't. I don't. And I think they do. And, 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 and I think about when I was growing up, man. It was like me and one other Asian kid. You know what I'm saying? So like, we got a lot of stuff. Like, for me, like, um, people always 
I mean, but it was like kid stuff, you know, like uh, making fun of like Asian people's eyes or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, st stuff that you were kind of mad about when you were a kid. But they used to make, yeah, absolutely, man. We used to get stuff like that. It wasn't until like I was a kid and then an adult started like talking shit about like Pearl Harbor and like Vietnam and stuff like that when I was a kid. That's when I was first like, whoa, okay, there's actually something going on. Because before that, I thought it was just, it was just kid stuff, you know? It was just kid stuff. And then when an adult says it, then you're like, okay, I actually am different, you know? But don't you think it's no, taught I, I, then? It's something that's taught by adults. It's not. It's not. It's not a natural state of being for the children. I guess, it's, but like, it's but the thing is, but like, the thing is, is like, all right, even kids, man, they grow up like. When you're a kid, you watch like kung fu movies. So there's like an Asian kid in your class. You expect him to know kung fu, you know. So it's like everybody would come up. That's like everybody used to ask me, "Yo, do you know karate?" And I'm like, "No." Nah. Well, I mean, yeah. Actually, I do. Unfortunately, I took karate, so it didn't help, you know. But, I, I, I agree. I agree yeah. with what Akil was saying because I had an experience like that. I mean, I was in primary school. I think I was seven, seven years old, and uh, I was living in Swansea, Wales, in Wales, uh, Swansea. It's just uh, a few kilometers away from Cardiff. And in my school, um, my primary school, I was the only black kid in the whole school. The only black kid in the whole school. And so a lot of kids, um, uh, they would, they knew that I was from from Africa. You know, they, they didn't necessarily know where Mozambique was. But they knew that um, you know the black kid is from Africa, and you know. Uh, <laughs> but but the amazing thing was that you know I I never got bullied or anything like that. You know, I never I never got bullied uh, verbally uh, or anything or physically or anything. Uh, everyone was was very friendly, and you know they all wanted to know like about where I came from, hmm. and it was really interesting. For them, that in terms, in terms what of what was, was it but like a, a progressive uh, community? They you know yeah, what I'm they saying? never was it like a was it a liberal they never, community? They never separated me from anything. They always involved me in everything. Like I was, you know, not yeah. Like there's nothing different. They didn't see nothing different with my color or, okay. or anything at all. It's for me, uh, man. For you, AC. Uh, yeah. And right now, right now in right Cape Town, now, yeah. Right now in Cape Town, to be honest with you, I see a lot of that. Even just looking at people's eyes when I look at them, and when I go out to whenever a club or to a supermarket or anywhere, I can see it in some people's eyes that you know there's still that, hey, you know you're you're black, I'm white, you're colored, you're Asian, you're you know, and for for me the way I grew up and the way my parents taught me, um, they taught me that there's no difference between anyone. Everyone is the same. Like, there shouldn't be a difference. But I can't see that. And even when I talk to some people, you know, and I can actually hear that from the way they're talking to me as well. I, ex I experienced that there's a kind of like a barrier or something that is not putting me on their side or putting them on my side. I don't know if you understand. Like, there's always a little barrier or, some, or something. They're is it not a temporary barrier, you think? Is it a temporary barrier? Or is it something like if you get to know them more? I think it's going to come down. Yeah, like I just think a front at the beginning. I think it is a front at the beginning for some people. Uh, and for some people, it isn't. Okay. I think you go first. I, I, just, I just feel like um, immigrants, you know, not foreigners, immigrants in. in in South Africa and Africa and its diaspora have not been given enough audience. There is no platform for, for, for immigrants to actually, you know, voice their views, you know, and, and say that, you know, this is what we, we, are, we are fighting against. Can, can somebody come in and do something about it? And, and it makes things very, very difficult, you know, for immigrants because we are all, we are all from different backgrounds. We have the Nigerians, Cameroonians, Congolese, and we cannot come together because even if we do come together, who is gonna listen to us? You know, and after that incident in May last year, you know, there were talks about, you know, creating some kind of a platform where immigrants in Cape Town, you know, can start speaking out and, and voicing their views, you know, telling somebody who this person is, I don't know, how we can address this situation instead of sending people back home. Actually, my dream is to create an empire where um, we, we actually help 
in terms of talent, whether you're doing art, whether you're doing music, whether you're doing film, anything, that you can come to us and ask us for, for, for that help. We don't want to be guys who are part of an elite, you know, or untouchables, no. We still want to have people coming in, talking to people, and seeing where we can help them. You know, like you have these Hollywood recognized producers, OJ. Or Kepne Ojang is gonna be one of those names also one day. Mine is to be part of um, the team that like helped reconstruct Mozambique from from what it is now, you know. Especially after well, all the post post floods team. Yeah, let's put it that way. Because ever since the floods, it's been like Mozambique has been crawling. Like it will take five steps forward and like eight back. So it seems, you know. So like I wanna be part of that team that like helps it just progressively go steadily go forward, you know. No, actually, I'm, I'm very happy here in South Africa and um, at the moment it's still like a startup phase. It's just my third year here in South Africa and I would like to um, spend a lot of more years in South Africa. That's really a, a dream because I really love it here. People talk about retirement. I don't want to have to retire. I want to enjoy, wake up every day, enjoy what I'm doing so that I can keep doing it as long as I want. You know, it's like I don't want to wake up and, and hate going to work or, or facing life or whatever. I just want to be, be happy with, with looking forward to the day. My dream is to leave a positive legacy, to, to know that I've lived a life worth living and that I've realized every single dream that I've ever had for this particular life. That's it. some locals have about immigrants and foreigners. Okay. It seems like there is no difference between foreigners and immigrants mm -hmm. in Cape Town. I don't know. Have you had a like, bad experience with that? I have had really, really extreme bad experiences about that and usually I choose. Really? Yeah, like you meet them but on a very superficial basis, like in a restaurant, in a club or so. But like to really like to, to, build, to build up friendships is not so easy. I don't know, it seemed like people were very much inviting and, and, and welcoming into, into, into circles. So I think that um, for me, one of my favorite things about Cape Town is, that, is actually the people, mm. you know? When, when somebody sees me for the first time, mm. one of the first questions that they ask is where, where you're from. Mm. Now, I don't have a problem with um, um, somebody calling me an immigrant because I'm not mm. from South Africa. But mm. when they call me a foreigner, you know, that word foreigner, it comes loaded, you know, because... <laughs> it was a can. Not voting. If we want to build our nation... The problem with the Somalians... I just want to experience something else than a black man. <laughs> on, move I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have Corrupt sex and then I pulled Crap, up. but it's nice. <laughs> My own experience is that it's not so, it's not so easy to meet Cape Tonian. From what I understand, you know, a foreigner is somebody who is foreign. You know, you're not from Africa, you're foreign. But I, I am in, I am from Africa and I am in Africa. And I am termed as a foreigner. I find it um, a little bit, it, it worries me, you know, the kind of impression that